Hey guys, today we got another look at The Brothers War, a little bit of a sneak peek from Magic the Gathering starring Lady Danger from the Game Nights Command Zone channel. So we're going to watch this video, take a look, and see what is going on. Um, let me just grab my browser here. Um, this is the first time I'm watching it, so let's let's take a look. This is Brothers War coming out next month. It's the second in a two parts or three part series about uh, the Phyrexian War with Dominaria. Um, very excited. We've got a couple new cards in here, I believe. So let's just start Welcome, it off. Magic fans. I'm Lady Danger from the Command Zone podcast, here to help kick off the preview season for Magic's latest set, The Brothers War. This set, we're joining Magic's modern day heroes as they delve into one of the most important events in the history of the multiverse, searching the past for a way to thwart the Phyrexian threat in the present. Now we've got a lot to show you today, so let's get right into it with a look at how the designers and artists took inspiration from Magic's past as they brought this pivotal moment in history to life. This is very exciting. I know that a lot of people have hold reverence, um, with Dominaria. It's a plane that we've visited a lot in the past of Magic. This is my first trip to Dominaria with Dominaria United. So I'm excited to learn as much of this history as people are to revisit this history. One of the difficulties of telling a story in Magic is that it's non-linear, right? Um, you get 15 or 16 little windows into the setting and the story that we're trying to tell. So in this case, we're telling a story that spans multiple generations. Oh, here's little um little urza and little mishra and their mentor generations it's somewhere between 40 and 60 years and then them grown up a little bit and they're fighting they're at odds with each other of history on dominaria you'll see you know giant mechs you'll see trenches you'll see thran ruins you'll see environments that if you're a fan you know will be dominaria but will be dominaria kind of like you haven't seen it you've only heard it described Brothers War takes place something like 4,000 years in the past. One of the things that we want people to see upon opening a booster pack is giant mechs. You'll know right away. Oh, look at these lands. Okay, so we've got some very creepy. So the Mishra mechs are the ones that are creepy. They're kind of uh, pieces randomly cobbled together. They're kind of poison-like. They're very um, kind of scary looking. They're dark. And then the Urza mechs are the ones that have clean edges. They're more round and smooth, like this swamp. Um, and this plains, I believe, are Mishra mechs. Um, the island looks like it probably... Or, sorry, the plains and the swamp are Urza-type mechs. And then the island, the mountain, and the forest all look like Mishra mechs. Very, very cool. Love these arts way that you are in the Brothers War. Love we'll these see arts. those mechs in the landscape that. at their full strength and glory marching across the world as one would have seen it during the Brothers War. We're going to be printing the remaining four pain lands that were not in Dominaria United. Yes. They are brushlands, underground river. This is hype. I've been waiting for these lands. Um, I think that, you know, obviously the pain lands in Demir colors was something I've been waiting for. It was a bummer that they weren't in the last um, Dominar United, but I knew that they were going to come in the next set because that's just how their designers put things together these days. For Llanowar Wastes and Battlefield Forge, for Brushlands, that one depicts a moment that is in oh, look at the war. high war. The you trenches. see Thran ruins in the background. The to big ruins. It, in the second act of the Brothers oh, that's War, really we cool. have the trench running straight through it, which distinguishes it from and it leads to like a land, tree or like something. Underground river, where you can see the wreckage and ruins this of is the like machines a from both war scene. Of the Brothers Army, along with these characteristic sort of caustic, decaying power stone moats. The earth itself is polluted. For Battlefield Forge, half of the land is on fire. There's oh, no damn. more factory that is massive. I wonder if these over here, um, these look almost like meteorites with the edging coming up uh, with with fire and stuff. It looks like it landed, impacted maybe. 
It's producing things. They are collecting slag heaps of scraps, machines, and melting them down on the battlefield itself. Oh, and then that this big one pile in the back is like all the pieces of machines. Lanoir wastes. It was the most difficult one from a creative perspective because Lanoir becomes a wasteland after the Brothers War. Lanoir is set on Ooh. a completely different continent. You can see in the background there's this burst of white light and the clouds are sort of deforming around it. That is the moment that Urza is detonating the Silex. We oh, see no. the forest of Lanoir the day it will become a wasteland. Oh, One of the ways that's that brutal. We're, we're returning to Magic's past is through our blueprint treatment, uh, which we are taking a selection of cards and we are using them to sort of reimagine through the lens of the Brothers' War in kind of the heads of some of the marquee oh, characters, cool. Urza, Mishra, their assistants, Tana's Love this Ashrod. art. The art for these cards, these are meant to be pages out of their sketchbook. It's sort of their marginalia illustrations of how they imagine Very certain cool. artifacts that they've either encountered, designed, or dreamed. For example, we have Ashnod's Okay. Ashnod's Altar is an old card, um, something that gets played a lot in Aristocrats. And I love the treatment of the old border kind of throws it back. Hey, this is a card that you guys have loved for a long time. And then this beautiful new art uh, by Greg Staples that has the kind of journal sketch drawing in it is, is really amazing. And then they've got obviously new uh, creative text there at the bottom. Altar, which was, I believe, first printed in Antiquities, which gets wrapped up into the entire canon of the Very Brothers cool. War. We've redone that one with our blueprint treatment, which is showing pages from blueprint. That's the word I was looking for. journal, designing the altar and, and imagining how it would work and the different functions that help her to create her, you know, hideous amalgamations of, of human and, and machine. We also have Ornithopter. You know, there are many different... Ornithopter, of another huge uh, magic card that, you know, is, isn't very cool, but um, is a zero-cost artifact creature with flying zero-two. There's lots of things in artifact decks, um, affinity decks that pump up artifact creatures so this is nice that they've kind of revisited this as well with the blueprint uh, art treatment and the old border doctor we wanted to run with one that we can imagine as urza designing sort of an early war model when i wrote the really concept cool. of this card was sort of imagining it to be the one that the character rendell uses to escape krug during the siege uh, along with all of urza's documents for goblin charbelcher this is something Ooh. that satanos was on an expedition somewhere in tercier and encountered goblins stuffing chickens and nails and bombs and other goblins into a cannon firing it and saying here is our goblin charbelcher these are our curious brilliant people they're curious about it and they want to know more about it and that's what we hope to show with these cards now before Very we cool. look at how the team approached revisiting these iconic characters we need to understand what their cards actually do so first let's take a moment to hear from editor matt tabak about the mechanics of the brothers war so the Brothers War is, of course, one of the most famous stories in all of magic. And a big part of it is the act of creating these gigantic war machines, artifact creatures that are dotting the landscape and bringing about destruction really into it. and terror. But what if we took these giant war machines and kind of broke them down to an earlier version, a prototype, a smaller version of itself that had the same abilities but maybe wasn't quite as large. What if we could combine that into one card? So you could either choose a smaller version or a larger version, depending on where you want to Sound in, the in game. this recording well, is really nice. Prototype. New prototype, prototype. cards are artifact okay. creatures that offer two choices, and your opponents won't okay. like either of them. Each prototype card has a divided text box. At the top is the prototype ability, and an alternate mana cost and power and toughness. Characteristics it'll keep until it leaves the battlefield. If you cast Phyrexian Flesh Gorger for one BB, it'll be a 3-3 black what? artifact creature. If you cast it for seven, you'll unleash its full might as a colorless 7-5 artifact creature. Crazy. Either way, it has the other abilities displayed here. Unless This is really awesome because it's like, we're always looking for ways to mid-max late versus early game. Um... And obviously, Flesh Gorger is a mythic, so it's it's a pretty crazy card. But if you draw it early game, say turn two, turn you have it in your opening hand. You even draw it turn four, like this prototype mechanic where you can cast something for cheaper with colored mana, very specifically. Um, 
and you get a smaller version of the creature, but it still maintains all of its uh, keyword text. So menace, lifelink, ward, pay life equal to Phyrexian, flesh gorger's power. It maintains all of that. It's just not a 7-5. It's a 3-3 three, three instead. I think that that's really powerful, and I think that there's going to be a lot of really cool um, affinity decks, but it also makes it so that these decks that play these artifact creatures want to have color in their mana base, whereas it was almost unnecessary to play colored mana um, prior in affinity decks. I think this is really stellar card design. As are being cast, prototypes off the battlefield have their normal characteristics. So Phyrexian Flesh Gorger is a colorless 7-5 in your library. Okay. Early game or late, your war machines will be ready. So what they're saying is that as long as it's off the battlefield, it's going to take the whole, it's going to be a seven mana, seven five, colorless artifact creature, Phyrexian Worm. So if your library has a trigger or, you know, you're playing something like the um, Battle Worm from Dominar United that cares about the highest mana value in your graveyard, the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger is a seven mana card. It's never a one black black mana card. Unless you play it onto the battlefield as a 3-3. Three, three. That's very cool. The Brothers War is an ancient war seen through modern eyes. And these massive war machines need power somehow. And that's Power Stones. Power Stones, okay. Coveted by both sides. Power Stones accelerate your mana production leading to explosive late game plays. A Power Stone token is an artifact token that can tap for one colorless mana. Now that mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell, but it can be spent on anything else. Oh. Artifact spells, activated abilities, even ones of non-artifacts, costs imposed by triggered abilities, costs to attack or block, and so on. No mage ever had problems finding uses for extra mana, and we trust you won't either. Okay, all of a sudden, Karn from Brothers uh, Dominar United makes so much more sense. Where I have a Karn right here. So Karn is a four mana Planeswalker. Uh, gives you four loyalty, and then its uptick, its plus one, is create a tapped Power Stone token. And the Power Stone is an artifact with tap to add colorless. This mana can only be spent to cast non can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells. So everyone was like, why is Karn so soft? Why does Planeswalker feel useless? Um, this is why uh, Power Stones are going to play a huge part in the Brothers War because there's going to be a lot of artifact creatures. There's going to be a lot of triggered abilities. Um, it's obvious that they were planning ahead. Karn is unfortunately part of a larger story that might involve them uh, no longer existing. So we're just going to accept that this was a foresight from the magic designers saying, hey, we're going to make this card that feels a little bit out of place here because it's going to play a bigger role in the two set, three set combo. And we're seeing that here with these power stones being um, introduced. And the Brothers War has two high-profile returning mechanics that players have loved before and we're positive oh. they're going to love again. The first is Unearth, where players Unearth? are going to be okay. digging up old, discarded I creatures like and artifacts for one last attack on the battlefield. One last chance to wreak some havoc. Unearth is an activated ability that can be activated only if the card that has it, such as Ashnod's Harvester, is in the graveyard. Unearth can be activated only as a sorcery. So unearth is a mechanic where if it's in the graveyard, you can unearth it for one and a black. Return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step, or if it would leave the battlefield, unearth only as a sorcery. So you get one less attack with it, theoretically, unless it's something that, you know, has a bunch of triggers, um, and you're really casting it for that rather than... Uh, to attack with it, but Unearth is something that's really cool. It makes for a little bit of an aggro graveyard. It's it's a lot of fun. And then once once you do that, either the turn ends or it dies, 
Um, then you exile it, so you get that one last hurrah, and then it's out of the game. But that's okay, because in a lot of cases, you're unearthing creatures to attack with Very them. cool. To help, the unearthed permanent gains haste. At the beginning of the next end step, exile it. If it would leave the battlefield before, he then, said for the most part you're doing instead. it to creatures, so I'm assuming those unearthed cards on non-creatures, life or even unlife, lasts forever. The other returning mechanic is Meld. Three new Ooh. Meld pairs featuring Urza, Mishra, and Titania at the height Heck of their yes. powers. For each Meld what? pair, one of the two cards. In okay, I did not. We saw these previews of. Meld. Um, three new meld pairs featuring Urza, Mishra, and Titania. We saw these previews of the Planeswalkers for Urza and Mishra, and I had no clue that they were two cards stacked on top of each other. I wonder if I can go back um, and see if they did that on purpose. I'm sure I still have it in my downloads folder. It's probably... There's so much random shit in here. Um, Mishra, Urza, anybody, Bueller, that's probably too far back. Okay, I can't find it really quickly, so we'll just leave it at that, but I think it's very cool that they somehow slipped to that one bias and you know, previewed these Planeswalker cards without actually giving up the information that they were meld cards. I think that's dope. At the height of their powers. For each meld pair, I'm excited that Tatiana, or Tatania, will have an ability that tells you exactly how to meld them. One thing to remember is you can meld cards only if you own them, and only if they're the actual cards to form the combined card on the back. Behold. Oh my god. That is rad. Look at Titania Gaia Incarnate. That huge like set of hair with the leaves. Vigilance Reach Trample Haste. Tatia Titania. Uh power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. When Titania enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. For three and a green, put four 1-1 one, one counters on a target land you control. It becomes a 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Huge. Titania. Gaia Titania. Why do I keep calling her ta no tokens, Titania? No copies. Only the actual cards in each meld pair can wow. meld. And how do you meld? Um. So, Titania... Is one green green for a three four elemental legendary creature with reach. Whenever one or more land cards you are put into your graveyard from anywhere, gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania and a land named Argoth, exile them, then meld them into Titania Gaia Incarnate. And Argoth is a forest land. Um, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature, which you might. Uh, taps to add green, or you can pay two green green, tap it to create a 2-2 two, two green bear creature token, then mill three cards. So Argoth is actually a beautiful addition. This works so well together. Um, obviously, this is how they designed it. They're professionals. Um... I think that the magic design team has been doing some really unique stuff that doesn't feel super out of place, that works really well. It feels good to play. It feels amazing for it to actually work. Um, so you play Titania on three, then you can play Argoth. It comes in untapped. You can start milling your own library by paying four, creating bears, mill three cards, and then as soon as there are four or more lands in your graveyard, you can meld. That sounds like so much fun. Honestly, honestly, so much fun. This might actually get me to play green. The actual cards to form the combined card that on was the savage, back. But... Behold, Titania. I used Gaia to love green, incarnate. and now I don't. I no just, tokens, I don't know. no copies, 
only the actual cards in each meld pair can meld. Titania is a single creature, even though she's represented by two cards. If Titania leaves the battlefield, both cards go to wherever Titania was supposed to go. Once that happens, the two cards are once again two cards. Titania, okay. Voice of Gaia, and Argoth, Sanctum of Nature. Like double-faced cards, meld cards are only their front faces while not on the battlefield. The Brothers War is awesome. If you like artifacts, there's so much for you here. Whether you've been a fan since the days of antiquities or whether you just met Urza and Mishra, there's something for your play style and you're gonna have a great time. I love it. Very now excited. Now that we know how these cards work, I want to meld. let's check in with designer Gavin Verhey so he can show us some new Kevin. takes on old favorites who happen to be headlining the Brothers War Commander decks. Oh. So we were gonna do two Brothers War Commander decks. Okay. And we're gonna do two decks and you're based around the Brothers War, well, there's kind of only one natural conclusion. It had to be Urza and Mishra, the two brothers themselves as commander decks. What a perfect fit for this product. This there's suit, a though, Gavin. There's a huge story. There's aeons between the two. This Chef's is kind of kiss. eternal feud. We wanted to find a design that really encapsulated the whole story Very of Urza nice. and the whole story of Mishra. And while they've taken many colors and many kind of dimensions over the course of their character, let's show them at their most powerful with all three colors of mana for them. So Urza, white, blue, black. Okay, Mishra, do we really care about blue, the black, commander red. decks right now? There's a lot that plays magic, including the people that may not necessarily You know, our goal is to get cards in a place that is more cards. And hear what our friends Ellie, Carmen, and Kenji are hoping to do once they get their hands on them. Fun looks very different for everyone. You know, our goal is to get cards in a place that is more inclusive and more fun for everybody that plays magic, including the people that may not necessarily we can be do another video in, like, on the, the commander high level tournament decks play. Later, and for me in particular, it's really awesome to see characters we've never seen on cards, including one of my favorite characters, Ashnod. She was Ashnod. legendary during the war for being the right hand of Mishra. She was his apprentice, but also was an instrumental part of leading him down this path of corruption. It is quite exciting to see corruption. this legendary villain put onto I'm just gonna a start cheering for, for random things. Gix was a Gix. demon praetor from Phyrexia. While Mishra and Urza were going at it and tearing apart Dominaria, he was a, instrumental in using that war as a smokescreen for the Phyrexian infiltration. To see him again, you really get the sense of how much evil is coming. So Dominaria He's creepy it was looking. a beautiful plane at one point. Specifically the forest of Argoth, where Titania, she was the Maro sorcerer, the elemental protector of that place. And she did her best to negotiate peace between the brothers. Ultimately, she sets up this permanent defense against the both of them to see Titania again who ends up having to sacrifice knowing that this is going to be the end for now but she believed in the ability to recover we want these characters to always be resonant we want the design to follow that and we wanted to make sure that it's telling the story of who these people were in that moment so for okay, example they're kind we of see just going Lumber over build his army what's really exciting about his card is the prince of krug and this is him beginning to build his army what's really exciting about his card is that you can make copies of creature that you control but they enter it as a one ones but they're really three threes because of his static ability. He works really nicely with creatures that have like enter the battlefield abilities. Sure, even if it might be smaller than what it was originally, it'll still give you another way to impact the game. And I Not think bad. that's a really exciting thing to see. The connection shows how he was able to use what he learned in his younger years in his older age at sort of the Okay, we've got power. some more card previews. We'll Herkel keep going. Herkel was a Herkel. scholar along with her husband founded the College of Latinum. And this was a place dedicated to discovering... At the beginning of your end step, if you cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non-creature spells that you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library. That's cool. So if you cast a variety of cards, you get to um, refill your hand. 
ancient magic that hasn't been seen in a while. The Pretty flavor cool. of this card is this scholar, this wizard who is delving cool. into arcane knowledge and it's learning through experience and development of skills and eventually that is how future wizards sort of train they future wizards magic mana they get reacquainted with these concepts and start to develop themselves and their skills the brothers war is a very interesting story Fight. there's this complexity and depth like Voldemort to it really and Harry Potter. so to get to see these characters that were... some aren't necessarily heroes or they didn't necessarily start oh, that's out a cool villains shot. and now we get to see them from the perspective of shot. when they Piece really of art. started when they were much younger and oh, how affectionate these brothers. Developed. that's always really Cute. interesting and so I'm really excited to see characters we just haven't seen for get cards and get some more storytelling behind them and flesh them out even more I'm really excited about all of the artifact stuff that's in this set. My first set Carmen was and Block, which was all artifacts. So in a lot of ways, this is super nostalgic. I almost felt like a little kid again, getting to play with all these cool robots. For me, again, I started back when Tempest and Invasion Block were really a thing. And that was kind of at the peak of when, uh, you know, Urza was doing his thing. The first thing that I'm going to be showing you today is Mishra, Excavation Prodigy. I can tell that artifacts are going to be a heavy part of the gameplay. So one discard of the cool card, things card with this version of Mishra one or more is that it's really good at moving red, red. your cardboard from one zone to another, which I think turn. does a really good job of implying That's all cool. the different ways that we're going to have players using their cardboard in the upcoming set. Yeah, so whenever I see a card like this, I think about the artifact synergies, especially with like the graveyard. I know some very powerful strategies in the past have used cards that filter artifacts specifically to the graveyard. And this one does a really good job of that. All right, and the next card that I want to show you is Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. Ooh. Oh boy. Okay, we got a new Teferi Planeswalker. Uh, Temporal Pilgrim, three blue blue for a four loyalty Planeswalker. It has a static ability. Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi. That's rough. And then it has a zero ability draw card. So you put a loyalty counter on it. Minus two, create a two, two blue spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a one, one counter on this creature. Holy. Minus 12, target opponent chooses a permanent they control and returns it to its owner's hand. Then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control into its owner's library. Whoa. So you re, you basically time twist their entire deck back together. That that's pretty crazy. The only things, so they get to um, save one of their things. So they pick their most prominent non-land permanent, put it back to their hand, and then they take everything else that they have on the battlefield and shuffle it into their library. Wow. It's fairies back. That's and he draws very cool. Cards for zero loyalty. That's a good ability. It's like it's a real cake and ice cream <laughs> situation, right? You get to draw your card, oh, and no. your Teferi gets better. Wait, and it, the token grows too. It, it's synergy. What is this minus twelve? Wow, that is very strong. It's I, I like think, Cyclonic Rift, but better. Right, it's one where they cast Cyclonic it. Rift. Yeah, where actually. Just like, all right, someone's dead. Let's figure out <laughs> yeah, who. Yeah. We're getting to the business end of this that, game. That's exactly what's going to occur with this card. <laughs> and the next thing I want to show you is Mishra, Tamer of Makfawa. Ooh, Mishra, Tamer Makfawa. of Makfawa. All right, he looks a lot more sinister than the first one, and I didn't realize that these are all going to be in the same set together. So we're going to have multiple Mishras on the battlefield that's at the same time. That's a combo, time. right? That, that is a wombo combo if I've ever seen it. And you know the only thing better than discarding artifacts from your hand to the graveyard? Oh, what's that? Putting them from the graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, that's that's crazy good. One of the things we really want to drive home with the Brothers War Very is cool. the scope of everything. How many players are involved, all of these different characters that you might be familiar with and some that players might not have heard from in a while. So someone that we really want to make sure that we got an amazing card for is Gix, Yogmoth Praetor. Oh, Five here's the card. This is our Praetor for the set. Gix, Yogmoth, one black black for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature, Phyrexian Praetor. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, it control its controller may pay one life if they do draw a card. So any creature deals combat damage, uh, you can pay life, draw cards. For four black, 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 discard X cards. Exile the top X cards of your target opponent's library. 
you may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. Whoa. So for seven black or for seven mana and discard however many cards you can, you'd want to do your, like, your whole hand. If I'm running a Gix and a Teferi, I draw a bunch of cards and then discard them all and play off of my opponent's deck. That's pretty fun. As Praetor in the title tells me uh, something bad's going on. Right, Phyrexian Praetor? <laughs> that is not the protagonist. No, nope, nope, not in the slightest. It looks like uh, Gix had some kind of an epiphany or something and, and went to some dark Very side. Cool. Seven mana ability. That kind of just wins the game a lot of the times if, if you have any number of cards discarded. Of course, because it draws cards itself, that's fuel for the fire. So now that we've seen both of these sort of vertical cycles of the evolution of Urza and Mishra, starting from kind of younger scholars, archaeologists, etc., to the sort of demigods of magic that they were. That's just crazy. You get to see their evolution, the storyline. That's really cool. Russian. I mean, if the cards are already baseline powerful enough, and then they just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger, it's really fulfilling. Very, very cool. Factor. This uh, we get to see the actual main story characters, you know, fulfill their arc, whether that be good or bad, in its completion, for lack of a better <laughs> word, right? I mean, they are going to find their ways across, whether it's on your kitchen top table, or maybe you're going to take it to Friday Night Magic, or some of these, you know, they're going to play at the highest tiers of Magic just for because sure. of the power level. So as a huge limited player i'm gonna be super excited to just open the pack go immediately to the rare not even look at the rest of the cards see that gix or whatever and just slam it on the table force it call it a day like we just saw Great. the rivalry between these artificer siblings i love that all whole the set. but what if i saw their feud in, in one doesn't set? stop at the cards themselves as a special event magic has partnered with extreme robots for a battle of the ages oh. two robots one team Urza and one team Mishra will compete in a series of challenges culminating in a head-to-head -head fight with only one left standing. Heck Let's yeah. take a closer look at our contenders. Let's fight some robots. The fate of two machines locked in epic conflict will be decided in the arena when robot Fights. Robot. Only one will be victorious. Take the battle from the tabletop to the arena. The Brothers War. Battle of the Mechs. We hope you've all Hell enjoyed yeah. this look into everything coming your way in the Let's Brothers Smash some War. robots we'll be able together. To start playing at pre-releases beginning November 11th. November 11th. And Magic it's Online right behind my camera, November sorry. 15th, on November 11th pre-release. Or when the set hits store shelves November 18th. And be sure to mark your calendars for the Brothers War Commander Parties being held December 16th Commander parties. through the 18th. Hell yeah. Now before you go, we've got one last date to remember. Oh. On October 30th, the official cinematic trailer oh. for the Phyrexian story arc will be revealed to the world at the Magic 30 event in oh. Las Vegas. Even if you're not attending in person, you'll be able to watch it live at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time during the I Brothers believe there's War a teaser. we we'll watch this right after this. And as a special treat, here's a sneak peek oh, at they're gonna show 20 us right seconds now. of the cinematic. Beautiful. Enjoy. Let's go. Oh. Teferi. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Hajani, no! Oh my god, that's hype. So cool. I, I mean, I've only been playing um, Magic again for... God, like a little bit over a year now in in like a major way. I think that this is the first time storyline progression. This is the first time that you know, a huge story moment has happened since I've rejoined uh the fandom and th this could not be any cooler. I think even even with my lack of history with uh Dominaria, with Urza, Mishra, the Brothers War, um, I can't find the book to save my god dang life.
people are selling it for hundreds of dollars on eBay. And I just want, I just want to read the book, uh, really badly. Um, and so this is really cool. I think this whole scenario here pictured right now, this tale of two brothers, and we get to see multiple stages of their life, of their transformation, of their, um, you know, their history, their, their successes, their, their triggers, their, uh, fatal mistakes. We get to see these two brothers grow up in parallel and then start to split off at one point and then come back to clash. Um, and I think that that is extremely awesome. It's very interesting that Mishra is a creature and Urza is a planeswalker. Uh, I just noticed that for some reason. Uh, I think that that's very interesting. I, I'm very excited. I think that uh, the story of this seems really cool. If you haven't been reading the story, check it out on um, the Magic website. These new cards are really amazing. I've saved a few. Um, the Teferi card looks really awesome. The... Gix looks really cool. The Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Um, where's that Teferi? There we go. Temporal. Teferi looks awesome. This looks sick. I think this is going to play a huge part. Teferi's always a problem. No matter what set he's in, whatever printing he has has always become a problem. Um, the stuff like the... Oh, now it's not going to load on me? If you, okay, there we go. You cast Phyrexian Flesh Gorger for one BB. It'll be a three, three, three black. Ar so this prototyping is also really cool. Being able to cast giant uh, mechanical creatures early for a cheaper cost that gets you a little bit less power, but still has all of the um, rules text on them. I think that's really awesome. Um, Obviously, the power stones Blum's becoming a thing uses for extra mana. It and is we trust huge. You won't either. Uh, what else is there? There's oh yeah, the Titania uh, meld card is really cool. I think this is super badass. It's gonna make a lot of people really love green. Um, I was curious because uh, the way they've laid out the two brothers is that Urza is white blue and mishra is red black and that's only four of the color pie so it's really cool that they found a way or maybe they didn't find a way maybe it just like was there on the table all along and it just was happenstance but to be able to include the green um creature and have something that's just as huge just as powerful coming from this land that you know is obviously gets devastated by this war so they're a bipartisan um third uh, unfortunate third party in the, in this giant war and having them just happens to be the the fifth missing color i think that's just flawless i think you as a storyteller you get real jazzed about that just coming to be um yeah that that's it for today's preview i think there's some really cool stuff here um again the brothers war pre-release is on november 11th so we're you know just under two weeks away from that um actually we're more than two weeks away from that but, but yeah, we're just over two weeks away from that. And then it looked like they were going to do arena before physical, uh, which is something that they ha have been avoiding lately. So I'm surprised that they're um, doing that. Yeah, so it looks like they have arena on the 15th and then in stores the 18th. So they're going to do, uh, what is that, the Tuesday? Tuesday, 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 15th. Yeah. Tuesday. So Friday is pre-release Tuesday is arena, um, or online. Um, and then that following Friday is the in-store full release. I'm very excited. Let me know in the comments below, 
what has you most excited about the previews so far. Brothers War, it's happening soon. Let's fucking build some mechs and fuck shit up. I think it's going to be dope. Would really appreciate a, a, a sub to the channel. Uh, like this video if if you are excited about the Brothers War. Let me know which side you're on. Are you Team Urza? Are you Team Mishra? Are you Team Titania? Ti Titania? I keep saying their name wrong. Um, are you just uh, going to stand off to the side and cast Teferi and be annoying? Uh, let me know what side you're on in the comments below. Appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.